maybe start to add a header. I want to give my header some life. Um, I actually have a logo that I want to use, and I also know that I have some navigation I'm going to be wanting to implement today. So I'm going to go ahead first and just make sure that I make some space for the strip that I'm going to actually put into my header. And I know that might sound crazy, but it's actually a really good practice to make things again full width. I don't want to have a you know content area that's going to be full width, and then my header is going to be like this, right? So I want to kind of again continue that that full width in that page hierarchy. So I'm going to actually go over into add. Um, and we're going to add a strip again, and this time it'll be under the classic section, and we'll go under the white preset, and I'll just take that strip and I'll paste it right above. All right, it's not in my header just yet, because again, you know, blue, content area, orange, header. So I'm going to go in, I'll resize this. I'm going to use my tools in my toolbar to make this a certain size. I think I want this to be maybe 125 pixels, you know, in height here. Uh, right now, it's only going to be one strip. I want to make it a couple columns, so I'm going to drag that into my header. All right, and I'm going to close up the huge gap I have here. Now I could just drag it, but if this was like a longer page and it took a long time to drag it, I could just zoom out. And when I zoom out, I get the option to delete that extra space. Okay, and everything below is just what's in my header that I can just pull up. See that? Simple. All right, so what I'm going to do is go on my strip. I'm going to go to layouts and I'm going to add some columns here. All right, not one, not two, we're going to have three. All right, and next up, I'll just click and I'll change the proportions. All right, so I'm going to have the one furthest to the left be about 20. Take some time to get it sometimes. It's like a game, Brett, trying to play around sometimes with this. Yeah, it's like it's like Frogger or something. So so for everybody just tuning in, for everybody watching and tuning in, what are you shaping here, just so we know? Yeah, so I'm actually making like the structure of my header. Okay. You know, and, all, and although I could just be kind of like putting you know, content in and saying, okay, great, that's it. You know, that's not what's going to make people go wow when they see something that's going to make them go, okay, it's a website. But I'm trying to show you how to really build things, you know, from a more professional standpoint. And again, get a result that you would get on platforms that you might be used to exactly in Wix the same exact way, you know, and using the best practice. Because we can always, the, the beauty of Wix is that you can do whatever you want. And I think that's also sometimes one of the biggest uh, challenges, right, is that you can do so much, but we can do sometimes so much of the wrong things. So I'm here to really just show you like the best ways to you know uh, accomplish all of the same results that you're, you're looking to get yeah and and there are some incredible i mean there's a lot of uh engagement right now from from our uh, amazing viewers and yep. and for example like nate wants to know would you recommend building a site entirely on strips or is there a reason not to use them for all of your content when would you use strips i mean you would use strips whenever you want to basically be in control of every single piece and section of how your content is divided based on the fold right so and that's again the best practice right now you could add for example there's sites where maybe you just add the wix pro gallery and you add an app and that's the website because the person's a photographer who wants to get books for consultations but if you're actually building out a nice site with like tons of design tricks or you want to maybe add like a custom shape into a strip and change off the angle of the focal point you might want to use a strip to be able to control and have more control over each exact section of the area all right. So again, just as I build today, you'll start to see the benefits of using strips when we start to go into the mobile and you see the mobile optimization flow and the benefit of doing it versus just kind of putting content on the canvas. They're completely different things. So I'm sure you understand as we go along today more and more as to why we use strips. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm watching uh, the chat. It's, it's going pretty crazy, but, but Jonathan <laughs> uses strips like like crazy. Uh, so it, one more question about the strips. Are they, are they more of a responsive element uh, when you use a strip? Yes, they actually are a responsive element. You know, um, in Wix, the platform today is identified as adaptive, um, and the tools on the classic editor are adaptive, but we do have responsive elements that we introduced um, after the initial inception of the product to make it more responsive and to behave in a more you know, adaptive manner. Yeah. That's great. Man, we've got some fantastic questions. This is really, really Let's keep going though. I know there's a lot more to cover. So we're writing uh, all these questions. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with them, but uh, yeah, sorry, Anthony, this is great. All right, you do it, let's do it. All right, so cool. So I have this extra space here. So I wanna explain if you're just coming in now, what I just did. So I just built out a strip in my content area. Um, in my header, I put a strip that had three different sections and I'm gonna customize each one of them. Uh, one with the logo, one with the menu, and one with some uh, you know, menu, member login later on when we add bookings. Um, but first off, you might see this extra space here. It's intentional, and I did it because I wanted to be able to customize what happens when I start to scroll down my page, because I have the strip that's inside of my header. And if I just kind of close this up, then I wouldn't have the, the opportunity to kind of go in and to modify the settings of the header because I would be touching the strip because I would take up 100% of that area. So I've actually made that space because I wanted to go in 
and customize some settings within that header background. Okay. Um, so let me just kind of go here and we'll just drag this down a bit. All right. So I want to kind of keep that about right here. And in my header, I'll go ahead and just change up the settings here. I'll make it freeze, right? So that header is going to be frozen. And I'm also going to go in and change the design of my header, I'm making it a color and making that color all white. All right, you'll notice why I do it later on. All right, and now I'll just close up the header here. And there we have it. One, two, three. And if I scroll, when I preview, it sticks with me. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start customizing some stuff. So farther on, on the right here, I'm just going to change my common background to a color. I'll go with that tone. In the center, I'll leave it blank. I want my navigation to be on a very clean design. All right. And then over here, I'll just go ahead and I'll start to make some changes. So I'm going to go in and add an image. All right. And actually, again, I'm going to drop, drop this right in from my computer. All right. I have a nice little logo I put together. And as you can see, super quick to get that uploaded, adding that to my page and just resizing that. And I'm just dragging that in from the corner. Uh, there are a lot of questions about, will this be available offline? I, I believe it will. Uh, so it, it will be available. Okay, and you can see here I got my logo positioned right there pretty nicely. All right, so let's talk about another tool. Um, let me go back into my toolbar here. I want to make sure that all my, you know, content is going to be aligned, you know, to the word, the logo camp. So what I'll do is I'll go into tools, I'll click on snap to objects, and just like that, I can make sure that the content, you know, is linking up with camp right above it. So I can move it over. Now, I don't have to do this individually. I can also select multiple elements by holding shift and moving it over. Okay. And once I have everything set up, I wanted to even group these elements to move them all at once. I can do the same thing, just holding shift in and grouping them all together. We have some great questions. And some of these, if we have Tom, Anthony, I would like to ask a favor towards the end. Some of these questions that, that uh, our, our, uh, our partners are asking, is mm -hmm. it possible that maybe we can have a demonstration of some of these questions? Because I see a few that are really, really great. Would you be okay with that? 100%. Yep. Okay, great. I, I think we should put some of those away towards the end. Sorry, keep going. This is great though. All right, you got it. All right, so as you can see, my header is almost done. The only thing missing is some navigation here. Um, so I can actually, now what if I wanted to customize like the color of, you know, the background, I can do that too. I can go into change, make it a color and make it a little bit lighter, easy, right? Totally up to you. Again, that's a design choice, All right? I can kind of scroll and just like that, make something pretty nice. All right, now I want to show you something else too. So we broke the boundaries. You know, we went outside of those grid lines that most people don't think we can do. <laughs> and now what we can do is actually go in, you know, uh, to the options here and just kind of set up margin. So if I wanted to make this 20 pixels, you know, from left to right, I'm kind of adding in that margin, not padding, but a margin. Um, and then here, I'll do the same, making that 20 pixels. Right? And that just kind of just builds up. a really nice cool design from, from both sides. And we'll keep that consistent with every strip that we add. So again, uh, back to that initial question that we got about strips. This is something that you couldn't do if you weren't using strips. You couldn't kind of break the boundary and then decide, okay, now where do I really want it to fall on the left and to the right? So another reason of why we use strips, okay?